Now that we've conducted the Wi-Fi site survey using NetAllies AirMapper and uploaded it to Link Live, it's time to start digging into the results and generating a report. Once we've completed the site survey and uploaded it to Link Live, it is time to review the results. Using Link Live provides an easy means of viewing the site survey results. Since we're using a web browser to access Link Live, we're not tied to a specific operating system. Whether you're using Windows, Mac OS, Linux, or a mobile device, you're going to be able to view the results of the AirMapper site survey. In addition to platform independence, Link Live makes it very easy for a person at one site to perform the survey and someone located elsewhere in the world to view the site survey results. This means that you do not have to deploy a highly skilled Wi-Fi engineer out to the remote site to perform the site survey. A local technician or manager can perform the legwork of conducting the site survey and the results can be reviewed remotely by the Wi-Fi engineer. Let's look at how we view and analyze the site survey results. I'll begin by logging into Link Live and going to the Air Mapper section by clicking on the icon on the left side of the screen. Here, I will see all the site surveys I've performed. As with viewing other results and reports in Link Live, I can use the search feature to narrow down the number of surveys displayed on the screen. The search can be performed on comments, the unit name of the AirCheck G2 or Etherscope NXG used to collect the data or date range. Using the search feature can help me find the site survey I'm interested in quickly and easily. While well, on this view, you will also have the option to upload AirMapper site survey data that has been saved locally to Link Live using the option in the lower right corner of the screen. Once I find the survey and click on it, I will see three options on the upper right side of the screen. These are Export to Survey Pro, View Analysis, and View Survey. I will cover exporting to Survey Pro in another video. To start with, I'll click on View Survey. The floor plan, path, and heat map will be displayed on the screen. By default, the signal strength heat map is shown. This heat map will include all the SSIDs discovered during the survey. The path that was taken during the survey will be displayed as arrows on the floor plan and may be turned off by clicking on the Show Path checkbox in the upper right corner of the floor plan. The size of each of the circles on the heat map represents the signal propagation distance I entered when configuring the site survey in AirMapper. I can change the orientation of the heat map by clicking on the Rotate button in the upper left corner of the floor plan. When I click anywhere on the heat map, the information collected for the closest data point is displayed on the right side of the screen. This includes information about each of the BSS IDs discovered at that data point. This information may be filtered by entering a string of characters into the filter field. As an example, I'm going to type open to display any networks using open security. When analyzing data on locations with hundreds of BSS IDs, filtering can be an easy way to focus on just those devices of interest. Also, notice that when selecting a different data point on the heat map, the filter will stay active. This closest data point provides visibility into the metrics feeding the heat map and can be used to analyze the results in detail or provide valuable information for troubleshooting. To apply a filter to the entire heat map, I will use the Filters option, located just above the heat map. For those that do not have Ally Care, you will be able to filter by SSID. If you do have Ally Care, the filters will include SSIDs, Band, Channels, APs, Data Rates, Type, Channel Width, and Security. When selecting one or more of these filters, only those devices that satisfy the filter criteria will be displayed on the heat map. These filters may be combined to provide a very specific view of the heat map. Once I've configured the desired filters, the heat map will update to show those areas that have coverage based on the filter criteria. To select a different heat map, 
Click the down arrow under Option to see all the available heat maps, which include Signal, Noise, Signal to Noise Ratio, Co-Channel Interference, Adjacent Channel Interference, AP Coverage, Minimum Basic Rate, Beacon Overhead, Maximum Transmit Rates, Maximum Receive Rates, Maximum Transmit MCS, and Maximum Receive MCS. To access the AP coverage, beacon overhead, and max transmit and receive MCS rate maps, you must filter on the SSID first. Note that at the time of this recording, data collection for all of these heat maps is supported in the Etherscope NXG. AirCheck G2 version 5.0 supports all but minimum, basic rate, and beacon overhead. Support for those heat maps will be available in version 5.1. Also, new visualizations are added regularly as the Net Ally engineering team continues to enhance the capabilities of AirMapper. Next to each heat map is a legend for the type of data presented by the chosen heat map. This legend also serves as a sliding bar to create and adjust a threshold setting for the heat map. Alternatively, a numeric value can be entered in the text box next to the bar. In the signal strength heat map, if I were to adjust the threshold setting to negative 35 dB, we can see the areas of the heat map that do not provide at least that level turn gray. You can combine filtering along with a threshold setting. As an example, let's look at the AP coverage heat map. By filtering to just one of my SSIDs and using the legend to select two APs, I can see where I have coverage by at least two APs for that network and where I do not. This is a great way to determine where I'm either lacking redundancy or have too much overlap in my Wi-Fi network. Once I've created a desired visualization, I can then create a report based on the heat map that is displayed. Clicking on the floating action button, we see three options. The first option is to create a PDF report based on the displayed heat map. Selecting this option will bring up a screen where you can provide a custom logo, title, labels, subtitle, and description. Clicking Generate will save the report to the Uploaded Files section of Link Live. Once the processing is complete, you can download and view the report. It may be that you would like to include multiple views of the same survey, where you apply different filters to each view. To add multiple views to the report, click on the plus symbol after clicking on the floating action button. This will add the displayed view of the heat map to the report. To view the items that have been added to the report, click on the second button to access View Surveys for Report window. This allows you to view each of the items or delete them. All the items included in the report will be put together into a single PDF file when you click on the Generate PDF Report button. This is a great way to show the coverage for individual SSIDs within the same report or highlight different metrics for a single SSID. The PDF has been specifically formatted for easy import into Microsoft Word for further customization if you wish. There are some cases where you will not be able to complete a survey all at one time. You may encounter a conference room that is busy or an area of the building that cannot be accessed during business hours. In this case, you can use the Merge feature within Link Live. To merge surveys, they must both use the same floor plan and calibration value. To merge two or more surveys within the same floor plan and calibration, click on the checkbox next to each survey within the Air Mapper section of Link Live. At the top of the screen, click on Merge into New. You will need to enter a name for the merge survey. Then click Generate. Link Live will merge the data points for each of the selected surveys into a single survey. Once created, you can view the combined survey and apply filters to create custom views. Another important thing to keep in mind that is each time a survey is uploaded, Wi-Fi analysis data is uploaded as well. This includes information about channel utilization, networks, BSSIDs, clients, and interferers. This is the same type of information that is uploaded when tapping on the Save icon on the home screen of the AirCheck G2 
or the upload Wi-Fi information from the Etherscope NXG. This ensures that as much data as possible is collected on the same walkthrough. As with the analysis information found in the analysis section of Link Live, you can generate both PDF reports and CSV files based on this information. To summarize the process, site survey data collected by either an AirCheck G2 or Etherscope NXG can be uploaded from anywhere at any time to Link Live. As a central repository and analysis tool, once the data has been uploaded, the site survey data can be viewed and analyzed using filters and thresholds to provide the view of the wireless network necessary to validate new deployments or troubleshoot problems with dead zones, areas with too many overlapping networks, interference, and much more. Reports can easily be generated, and the survey information can even be exported out to Air Magnet Survey Pro. Viewing Air Mapper site survey data within Link Live provides a platform independent way to view the information collected during the site survey. Anyone with access to the Link Live organization will have access to the survey data. There is no licensing involved and no additional cost. This eliminates the need to load special software on each device being used to analyze the data, saving money compared to other solutions and enabling collaboration across teams and between installers and their customers. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Be sure to check out our other videos on using AirMapper to perform Wi-Fi site surveys. Thank <laughs> you.